Okay, so recording started. So welcome you guys. Tonight is November 15th. And welcome to the Unstoppable Misfits slash Too Fit to Quit Nation um, team call tonight. So I'm glad that you guys are all on. It's awesome that you guys all showed up tonight. Um, so Vicki kind of uh, asked me earlier today if I would host the call. And um, she had scheduled an open question and answer, which was good because that's actually what I had scheduled for my team call tonight too. So it kind of worked out really good. Um, so I just wanted to see, no one had posted anything in the team page um, as far as like 10 minutes or, you know, as little as 10 minutes ago. So um, the one thing that I did want to talk about though is I was in a group chat earlier, like I said, before the recording started. And a couple of topics came up that I think are like super, super important for this time of year. Well, really any time of year. Um, this, but really apply to this time of year specifically, and um, and just kind of ending the year strong, ending it on a strong note, and then really taking on 2017, you know, like a like a wildfire, right? So, so basically, the topic came up of how people were kind of struggling with people saying no or not right now, you know, this time of year. Like it's really hard, you know, because. You know, we have Thanksgiving coming, we have Christmas coming, and a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I'm just going to, I don't want to commit to anything new. I, you know, I'm just going to wait until the new year, right? And it's, this happens every time, this time of year. Like, I've been a coach for four years. Oh my gosh, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm such a jerk. So for those of you guys that don't know who I am, I'm Cindy Atkinson. <laughs> I'm actually one of Vicky's personally sponsored coaches. So there you go. I've been a coach for four years. Um, and so, and I'm one of Vicky's Diamond coaches. So. So there you go. So that, that's me. I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, I figured y'all know me, right? Um, but I realize there's new coaches that don't know me. Um, so, so there you go. So like I've been a coach for four years and I definitely have seen this happen. It happens every single year, kind of the last quarter of the year. It slows down. It gets, it gets harder. That's for sure. Oh, I love you, Chelsea, too. <clears throat> so, and it's really, really easy to get caught up in kind of a defeatist attitude this time of year, right? Because I mean, you know, we're the reason we, we do personal development. If well, you should be doing personal development. If you're not doing personal development on a daily basis, that's your number one issue, right? I'm going to kind of like shove that down your throat here tonight because that is a super important process. So, so, um, so if you're not doing personal development, make sure that you start committing to that every single day, because the reason why we do that is first of all, is to really fill our own cup before we can help other people fill theirs, right? And if you're not, you know, I don't know about you guys, but like when I message people, like, and especially over the last four years, you know, you'll be messaging someone and it's crazy what people will tell you, right? Like, I mean, it's like, it's like being a bartender to like the 10th degree. Like people will literally share their life stories. Like, they reach out to you in one message and then like they're just like Bleh! you know like they don't even hardly know you right and they share things that like even their close family and friends don't even know about and and it can be hard that's hard to take on right because I truly believe that when we're having conversations with people like that if you're having a deep enough conversation with someone it definitely takes its toll on you emotionally right I mean it takes emotional energy to respond in a manner that's going to help someone else. And so that's like the number one reason why we do personal development is so we can help fill ourselves to help other people, right? Now the number two reason why we do it is because you know what? Network marketing is a form of sales. I know a lot of people think of that word as like, oh, we don't, we're not sales, I'm a salesperson, right? I don't think of it as sales either, but when it all boils down to the nitty gritty transactions, we are in sales. We're in relationship marketing, which is a form of sales, right? And in all facets of sales, you're going to get people that say no, right? It's, it truly becomes a number game. And now when I say that, I don't mean like thinking of people as numbers. I would never say that. But what I'm saying is that as our, jo our jobs as coaches are to, to educate ourselves on our products, right? And then talk to enough people to find out if our products are the right solution for them. So that's what I mean by number game. Okay. So when you're, so it's super important that first of all, you're educated about the products and a product of the product, right? That's the quickest way you can become educated is by actually doing the, 
you know, doing the programs, drinking Shakeology, using, you know, Performance Line, and then sharing your journey with other people. Now, if you're not talking to a lot of people, then yeah, it's going to be hard, right? And at this time of year, when you are, you know, you're going to get more no's than normal. And so what is the solution to, to that problem? Talk to more people. That's it. Truly that simple. Now, I know probably you guys are like, well, I feel like I'm talking to everyone, you know, and, uh, you know, sorry, I keep looking at, I need to like somehow like not look at the, I'm burping already. I just wanted to let you guys know that. Did you all see it? Like, so sorry. <laughs> and, but I'm like looking at the chat box and I'm like, oh, I want to like read every message as it is. I need to not do that because I'm totally like ADD and I'll be like, whoa, like, it. like I just did. Um, so basically, so if you're struggling with that, like, so let's say you're feeling that way. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are feeling that way. I felt it like in my own business and you're feeling that people are saying, no, you're just getting a lot of like pushback from people, right? <clears throat> the solution to that is honestly to reach out to more people. So whatever your system is, I realize that we all have different systems for how many people we reach out to in a day. Like I know that people have, a, you know, maybe a power hour checklist. They're reaching out to three people, five people. I had someone ask me how many people I reach out to on average a day. And my numbers have been about 30 people a day. And I've upped that to a minimum of 50 people per day. Right? So, and right now I am currently working my business seven days a week, but that's a personal choice. I, I don't recommend that to everyone, but just because of my own personal situation and goals that I have in my business. So, so you know who, how many people you're reaching out to needs to align with your goals, right? So let's say you're hitting success club every single month by reaching out to a certain amount of people, like whatever, let's say you're reaching out to 30 people a month and you know, you're hitting success club. That's awesome. You have an amazing closing rate and you're a rock star, right? But most people are going to need to do more than that. And so, and if you don't know how many people you're reaching out to, that's also a problem, right? So you need to be tracking. Like, I don't care if you track like pen or paper. I really do, but I'm going to say that for Mickey's thing because she likes pen and paper. So I'm just going to say that for her Zoom. Um, or tracking electronically, things like that. That's how you should be tracking electronically. Um, so because you can lose pen and paper, right? That's why. Um, so, you know, so where, however you're tracking, you've got to make sure you're tracking, right? And so tracking your, the people you're reaching out to, figure out how many people you've been reaching out to. Up it, double it, you know, see what happens because <clears throat> that is truly how you're going to build your business, especially during times like this. So I do have a resource for you guys because I think that this book is really amazing for this, for like putting this into perspective, like as far as, um, as far as how, how to talk to people and how many people you need to be talking to and why it's important to constantly have new people in your, in your, in your conversations, right? Cause I think a lot of us get really, really hooked. We get really, really excited, especially as new coaches, you get really excited because someone says, Oh, I'm totally gonna, I'm in, I'm, I want to join that challenge group. I want to buy that challenge pack or whatever. And then you're like, in your head, you're like, okay, I've got five people. They've committed. They're going to buy challenge packs for me. That's success. I'm at success club 10, but no one has bought anything. Right. But you keep, Going back to those same five people thinking you got it on lockdown, right? You got success club on lockdown. You've had five people buying a challenge pack. And then all of a sudden it comes to like, you know, whatever, October 29th. And you're like, oh my God, none of them have bought challenge packs or one, only one of them actually bought one, right? <laughs> but then you stop talking to other people. This is so common. So if you've done this, don't feel bad. I've done it like a million times. So like literally a million times, I guarantee you. Okay, so, so don't do that. I learned from, learn from my mistakes, learn from the mistakes of other coaches who've done it, and just continue having more conversations. I posted a quote, like a, a statistic in my team page yesterday that said, I'm going to totally botch this, this quote or the exact statistic, but you'll get the idea. Maybe one of my coaches will like post it in the thing, but um, it was like 62% of people that say they are interested in your product and want to buy it don't buy it for at least three months. 20% or more take over a year. 
Okay. So I have coaches on my team that swore to me they would never drink Shakeology ever. It took me two years of relationship building over two years for them to join my team and then become one of the leaders of my team. Right? So that shows you like, you just never know. And that is why it's so important to have massive conversations going. If you can remember every single conversation that you have going on in your life, in your head, you are not having enough conversations going. Okay. So I feel like I've kind of beat that, like, you know, right. Have I beat that in that it's like more, more conversations. Right. And so that truly, and, you know, and I know it sounds super simple and it's like, you're like, no, but there's just, no one's going to say yes. Yes. You will. People will say yes. There are coaches in our network right now who are, who are hitting success club 20, 30, 50, 100 during this quarter of the year, right? The only difference between those people and you, if you're not hitting those success club numbers, which I know you're not because I see the success club words on our team pages, you know, I'm not either, right? So the only difference though is that they're reaching out to more people. That's it. They're inviting more, right? It really is a numbers game, right? With that kind of aspect in mind. So, so just keep that in mind. So here's the book. If y'all have not read this book, it's the miracle morning for network marketers. Now I've read the miracle morning and this one, the miracle morning for network marketers, but this is a really great book if you have not read it. And it really talks about the breakdown of how the numbers work in network marketing without it being like, icky right does that make sense plus you should really support this because he's actually dying right now I just saw this and part of his community he's dying of a very rare and aggressive cancer which I was like oh, mind blown because this book literally changed my life so if you haven't read it I highly recommend it um, you know so another topic that came up today was okay so that's great and everything I want to reach out to more people I got I get that but now where do I find these people, right? How do I find people that are like not my high school? You know I mean? It's like you get to a certain point where you come in as a coach and then you like are told to expand your network and then you have, you know, you kind of go through all the people you went to high school with. You're all talking to all your friends and family that you like talk to all the time. And then you're like, now what? Right? Like, so I have a couple of tips that I use that, Cause I, you know, I've been a coach for four years. I've definitely exhausted my warm network. And if I exhausted, I mean, I've at least started the relationship building or rebuilding process with those people. I don't mean that they are like that. They're like gone. Right. Cause I truly believe no one ever goes off of your, um, your prospect list or your, your mate. I always put people on a maybe list. I never put anyone on a no, on a no list in this, unless they're like, um, assholes. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, that's kind of like the only reason why I would ever do that. I would just, Oh, there's a child. I'm such a jerk. Oh, I didn't even see the child. Oh, you did. Okay, good. She has headphones. <laughs> okay. I have to drink. My voice is like, it's all like cracking. I'm sorry, you guys. So, so like, but once you kind of get past that, you know, original list and, you know, we tell you as coaches, you need to be constantly expanding your network, right? And adding whatever one, three, five new people a day when you're doing your power hour as part of your power hour, right? Well, a couple of tips that have really, really helped me, especially because I'm like into my cold network. Like every person I add is my cold network at this point. And so I've, I've been really successful and by successful meaning added people from a cold network who have actually become customers of mine, right? Not just, people who are now on my friends list um, with a couple of different ways. So one of the ways is I use um, groups on Facebook, not free groups. I haven't had, a, I've had some experience with that mostly because um, like not the, the free groups, you know, like where people add to the network, like with free groups, I think mostly because um, a lot of those are clean eating groups and I'm sorry, I just don't eat clean all the time. And so I feel like a fraud hosting them. Um, I've had, I, I do a macro maidens group, which is like people who uh, practice flexible dieting and if it fits in your macros and I've added a lot of people through that group. Um, so I feel like we add a lot with our crock pot group, right? Which was really fun. We just did a crock pot group with my team. Um, so I feel like when you do a free group, 
make sure it aligns with like you, right? Because some of us just don't eat clean all the time. I know it's weird to be a fitness coach and not do that, but it's just like the reality of the situation, right? And so just make sure it aligns with who you are and, and kind of, because that's really what's going to attract your, your vibe and your tribe to you. And so, but I'm talking about like the Facebook groups that are already established, right? So like I was talking with a couple people, so I'm, you know, you know, you think about your like five things, this, the five things that you post on social media that attract people to you. Those are kind of the five types of groups that I flock to, right? So like for me, I'm in like a geeky parent group because I'm a total um, like Star Wars nerd and basically anything geek culture nerd, right? So I'm in like groups where it's like parents of, that are nerds, you know? Because I'm a parent too, I have three kids. Um, I'm also, one of my kids has pretty severe ADHD and PTSD and stuff like that. Um, my nephew that we have custody of. And so um, I'm in ADHD groups and ADD groups for that. Um, let's see, what else? Like tattoo groups. I mean, these are like the groups I'm in. Uh, pin-up groups, because I'm really into pin-up culture and, you know, pin-up dress and things like that. And um, so... Oh my God, I'm burping. So sorry, you guys. Um, so things like that, right? So think about your things. Make a list of things that you're, you know, that you're interested in. Now, the, the mistake I've seen a lot of people do with these groups is that they go into these groups and they, then they start friend requesting people and then they get kicked out of groups because then people like notify the admin and say, hey, this person's friend requesting me. They're obviously, you know, into network marketing and things like that. And the thing that has really helped me with those groups is like the same thing that you should be doing on your social media, right? Which is adding value. So people are attracted to you. Like I am a firm believer that we have to give before we get in this business. And that is how I've seen it work in my own business over the past four years. And that's how I've seen it work in every other successful B20 coaches business, right? You have to give something of value, expecting nothing in return in order to get something back you know, commissions, customers, coaches, whatever it is, right? And so when I go into these groups, I give value, but not like, hey, because this is another thing I've seen coaches do, which is like a big no-no and a way to get kicked out, is like they go into like an ADHD group or like something like that, and they're like, hey, I'm a coach. Any of you guys need help with nutrition? I'm hosting this free group that I'm having. You know, they'll like, talk about their beach body business in a group that has nothing to do with beach body, right? Instead, add value to the topic that is in that group, right? So like, let's say I'm going to use like an ADHD group for an example. You know, um, let's say you find an article or like I, I'm a, I, I, I have a phrase that I use on my team and I heard it from some top 10 coach like three years ago. But it's, you know, become a, ri a river, not a reservoir, right? And that's how I look at knowledge, right? Like when knowledge comes your way, you pass it on. It trickles down like a river instead of becoming a reservoir, right? You don't take in knowledge and just keep it to yourself. Like everything I, that I find value with, I share. I share openly with my team. I share openly with um, my customers, my coach, you know, everyone, my prospects, my followers. And so I truly believe that pays off, right? Like I don't believe in like keeping secrets, you know, and like, oh, I, I don't want my coaches doing something, you know, that like I'm that's making me successful, you know. I mean, that's crazy, right? Because I feel like the more successful we all are, the better we all are, right? And so um, so when you're in these free groups, add that value, right? So like when you see like a cool article or when you when you find a recipe or like let's say you find an article about nutrition and how it plays with ADHD, right? Share it in the group, right? Spark conversation, interact with people, actually care about people, like actually build relationships with these people beyond Beachbody, right? And then you can see if you make connections with people. And then once, you, once you've actually added value and built trust with people, then you can shoot a friend request and be like, hey, I know you from this group. I've seen all these different posts you do, whatever. Sorry, burpee. You know, like I just would love to get to know you better, but you know, whatever, however you invite, right? So that's one way that's really worked for me. And it's a way I've used consistently, like to build my cold network, okay? Now the other one, this is gonna sound kind of weird because it is kind of stalkery, but 
I have been known to be a stalker. It's how I met Vicky. I'm sure most of y'all met Vicky that way. And so my coaches met me that way. So I don't feel bad about stalking people, right? I feel like this is kind of like a, you stalk me, I'll stalk you kind of business. So it's all good. If we're honest about it, we're just like, have fun with it. It's all good. If, and as long as we're not like creepy about it. Um, so one thing I do is, so the, remember those five things that I was talking about, right? Like whatever your, your things are, your cool things. So like I always think about what I have on my Instagram. And um, so I'm going to go to my Instagram because I can't even remember what I have. Let's just say Star Wars, tattoos, pinups, whatever, weight loss, things like that. Okay, so what I do is I actually go to businesses of companies that I support, right? So like for this, I'm going to use a real example of um, – I was on Mod Cloth. Does anyone know who that is? It's like a clothing company. They do like pin, they do pin up stuff, but they do a lot of other stuff too. So I shop at Mod Cloth. So I was on their, I went to their Facebook page, their business page, and they do a lot of things where they'll like post a cute outfit and it's like an outfit ensemble or whatever. And um, there was one that I really liked, and there was a shit ton of comments, right? And so I started scrolling through the comments and was like looking at the ladies that were responding. And one gal said she bought the dress in a cupcake. And I thought she meant cupcake pattern. And I was like, I like some cupcakes, right? I like to eat cupcakes. I like to wear anything. If something's got a cupcake on it, I'm probably going to get a cupcake tattoo on my finger, right? So like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this girl's like, my friend, I need to be friends with this lady, right? So I like, I commented on the comment and then I sent her a message and I'm like, oh my gosh, I saw your comment on the mod cloth post, this post, right? I gave the very specific post and I was like, did you really get a, that dress in a cupcake print? Can I, and I'm like, I'm not trying, and I even say to her, I'm not a creepy stalker. Like, I just want to see a picture of the cupcake dress if you have it and want to know where to find it. Right. And so it ended up being this crazy conversation. And then she noticed that I, so she must have looked at my page because she is like, Oh, you're from Seattle. Like I used to live in Seattle. Right. So, so it ended up being this conversation. I then sent her a friend request. I told her I sent her a friend request, you know, and again, I totally default. I'm like honest. There's no weird, like sneaky maneuvers with me. I find out being totally honest with people it works much better. Like I literally say to people, I'm not creepy. Like, I'm just, I just want to be your friend. I literally see that. Like, and it works. I've never had one person say, no, we're not going to be friends. Like, I'm sorry. Right. And so like, you just got to be honest and just be who you are. I mean, I know that not all of you guys are going to say it exactly the way I say it, but we all have our own way of talking. I really try to talk in like private message or like even on my social media, exactly how I am in, in person. Right. Because I want people to know that like when, when people meet me in real life, I want them, I, I don't want them to be like, oh, you're not the same person. Like, you know, be like, oh, who are you? You crazy lady. Right? Like, so I try to keep it really real. Right? And I think that that's really important for building relationships, especially with your cult network. Right? Because they're a stranger. Right? You never know who's freaking creepy out there. Right? They could be getting creepy messages from people. And so I think being open and like, it kind of breaks the ice and kind of brings humor into things and kind of levels it levels it out. And so, yeah, so she's now a customer of mine and I've had that happen uh, tons of different times. Like a, the clothing thing seems to work really good. Cause I've had it happen with pinup girl clothing. They had a jelly shoe post, right? And y'all from the eighties have the jelly shoes. Oh my God. I used to wear those jelly shoes. Like nobody's business. They stank. Oh, they smelled so bad. They were so gross. And you take them off and like your feet were all like, I don't know, ah, they're gross. Well, they're like making a comeback. And of course I'm like, oh my God, jelly shoes. I need some jelly shoes, right? And so, yeah, this girl was talking about jelly shoes. We ended up having a conversation and now she's been like a consistent challenger and customer of mine for like a year and a half, right? So like, that's kind of how I build my cold network, right? And so each one of you guys could do that with whatever thing you like, right? So let's say you're like a Nike girl or obsessed with LaCroix. It could even be something as simple as that. Going to LaCroix's website, because people, it's like weird. Like LaCroix, if you're like into LaCroix water, like you're into LaCroix water. It's like weird. I don't even know how they've created that culture. 
and my phone's ringing. Sorry. Um, but they've totally created an amazing culture with that. So, um, so that's definitely a really, really good way to build your cold network. So, you know, and then all it is after that is taking action, right? On those two things, right? The, th the things I was talking about. So if you're feeling like you're stuck, like you got to talk to more people. And if you're comfortable with talking to that many people, the only way to get comfortable with it is by talking to more people. <laughs> I know it sucks. Like, and for a lot of you guys with like social anxiety and stuff, I mean, I have a lot of coaches on my team with social anxiety, right? And I know they, they all, oh my gosh, Rosa, your teapot is so cool. Wait, hold it up. Sorry. See, squirrel. Oh my God, look at her cool teapot. That's so awesome. Okay. See, you could totally go on a teapot website and be like, what is that? Tivana, whatever. There's like tea, tea site all kinds of tea places you could be like look at my cool teapot people like that's a culture that people are like really into tea like if you're into coffee or tea like I'm super into coffee so that's that's something that I always post on too is coffee um you know but it's whatever your whatever it is your things right so make a list like if you're if you're running out of people to talk to make a list check it twice no don't check it twice sorry it's getting too close to Christmas I'm like I already put my Christmas tree so I'm like yay Christmas um, you know, and really, really focus on just talking to more people. And one thing too, that I had someone ask me too about that earlier today was, so if I'm reaching out to 30 to 50 new people to every day, well, let me clarify. So my 30 to 50 people that I'm talking to every single day, those are new reach, you know, new, new touches, new reach outs, um, follow ups, right? So people I'm following up with, they're also coaches in my downline right? And current customers, so my current challengers and people like that that I'm working with. And so it's not just, and they asked me if I was inviting 30 to 50 people a day. No, I invite like maybe 15 people a week. That's my goal for me. Um, and that's to paid challenge groups, not free groups. I, kinda, I think of free groups as like free, freebies, right? So I only look at them as expanding network and adding value. And so I always invite to paid groups first, and then when someone says, oh, I really want to start until January, but I, I want to do it in January, you know, then I'm like, oh, well, you know what? I really want to still help you, like, at least survive the holidays. So I have this free group that's ongoing. I'd love to have you in it. Would you like to join that? Oh, yeah. I've never had someone know, say no to that, right, either. So that's always the kind of the way I work it with that. Also, another tip for this time of year is suggesting Beachbody as Christmas presents. I don't know if Vicky's ever talked to you guys about that, but like I know for me, like I signed up as a coach um, for my birthday and it was something that I had pre-planned. Like my husband was buying my Turbo Fire Challenge Pack. I was signing up as a coach at that point. And so that's something that you, when people are saying, oh, they, like if people are really interested and they really want it, but they're like, oh, it's Christmas. Don't be afraid to say to someone, you know, you can always ask for this for Christmas right? Like this could be your Christmas present. What an amazing gift for yourself for the new year, right? So that's kind of like something to keep in mind for like December and things like that, because you know, that's like a really, really amazing tool that I use for people. But what you don't want to do is get into like a negative mindset because yeah, it is hard for this time of year. It is not impossible. It is not Oh my God, my business is dying and now, oh, woo, it's getting, the world is ending. It is not that on any level, right? And so if you're starting to feel like that or if you're catching yourself talk like that, like it's just too hard. No one's talking to me. Like that's going to come across in every message that you send. So my advice to you, to you would be to like listen to more personal development, do more personal development and reach out to more people. So I'm going to check the, um, oh my God, you guys. I'm going to like read a million messages. Oh my God. <laughs> well, thank you guys very much. This is like, it's like the compliment here hour. Um, okay. So Jackie said a great PD book is get over your damn self, the non BS blueprint to building a life changing business. Ooh, I've never read that. It's lit a fire to me like no other book. Oh, well, there you go. You guys should look at that PD book. That's awesome. Oh, now they're all talking about it. Okay, so Angie asked what I use to track my business. 
So I actually use um, the Teamsy software. It's a program that was built by a Beachbody coach for Beachbody coaches. Um, I really, really like it. He actually built something very similar. He used to be a real estate agent for many, many years. And he actually created something really similar for real estate agents. And I feel like real estate agents are like the master prospectors, right? They know what's up, right? And so if there's any like real estate agents on here, they know what I'm talking about. I mean, they, they have to be, right? They have to be following up, building relationships. I mean, real estate is the like ultimate relationship marketing. And, you know, if you have a bad experience with a realtor, you're like, oh, don't ever talk to that person. But if you have a good one, you literally share that person with every person you know, right? And so, and their business is built off of referral. And so, like, when, when I found that out, when I found out he was that, I got on a webinar with him, and I was already using a different software program. Um, but the reason why I say that, Vicky's going to kill me, but actually Vicky's using Teamsy right now, just so y'all know. She's trying it on a trial basis after I had a conversation with her. And I'm going to tell her, I'm going to tell you guys the same thing I told her, which is why she is doing the, the Team Z trial right now, is I just got back from Platinum Edge. So for those of you guys that don't know what Platinum Edge is, it's basically a uh, annual convention that's put on by our larger team Platinum presenters, right? So Christine Dwyer, who's like the head of our um, larger team, there is no one above Christine Dwyer on our team, like on our leg of our whole team. Um, so she puts it on and she had an amazing presentation about, cause before I was always with my new coaches or my existing coaches, I'm like, I don't care how you track, just track. That's what I care about the most is making sure that you're tracking who you're talking to. Because if you have, you know, if you're not tracking, you're not going anywhere. It's like that, whatever that quote is where you're like, if you know, if you don't have a goal to aim at, you're, you're definitely going to hit it. Right. Or whatever it is where it's like, I don't, I don't know. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Like you got to have something targeted that you're looking at, right? You have to be tracking. But one thing that she brought up in this conversation was she actually had actual pictures, which was pretty amazing that she actually had these. She must have been saving them from coaches that have sent them to her over the years. But she had pictures of people like who had had a notebook. I'm sure a lot of y'all have notebooks like this, right? Laying around. And I used to have like 10 of those before I ever went digital. And it would literally take me, you know, people would be like, power hour, power hour, power hour. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It takes me 40 minutes just to get organized with my five freaking notebooks, right? Like, I got to, like, go through my notebooks, see who I talk to, write down a list of who I'm going to talk to, right? And how annoying is that, right? It's, it was so daunting that so many times I would feel overwhelmed before I even got to my power hour that I just wouldn't do it, you know, frankly. And this business is built on consistency. It's built on being successful in this business is built on being able to do the vital behaviors every day or five days a week or whatever is your special sweet spot that you're working on in your business, right? And so she talked about that, about the time that it took to be organized. And then, this was the kicker, right? She was like, she's had coaches like who have their notebook, which literally has every person they've contacted in the past like three years or whatever. I mean, we're talking like, multi-star diamond coaches, right? Leave them on airplanes, right? In the little, cause they're working on the airplane. They got in, 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 you know, flight Wi-Fi, working away, leave their notebook right in the little pocket in front of their thing, get off the plane. Well, those people aren't saving your notebook. They're cleaning the plane. So like in an instant, their business is gone. They have to rebuild it, right? She showed a video montage of a dog who had eaten her, her coach's notebooks, right? Destroyed them out in the yard. Like the dog's like posing for the picture with like a notebook in there, right? So that's why I truly believe that going digital and going with something that's in the cloud, like, like something that's stored not on your computer because, um, and she talked about that. She actually is using Streak, which a lot of coaches on our team use. I personally cannot use that. It's too sterile for me <laughs> like I like Teamsy because it's kind of like fun and happy and like pretty and they like when you do all your stuff they like tell you that you've crushed it right I love that kind of feedback and so like I I, I need that feedback from my Teamsy saying good job you got 100% you crushed it right and it's really cool because it's based off of algorithms so you can put in what your income is 
and it tells you how many people you need to reach out to, how many new prospects, how many, new co how many of your coaches, how many of your customers you need to reach out to every single day in order to reach your financial goals. So that's what I use. Um, a lot of my team uses it too. Oh my gosh, I just made this really big and I can't see it anymore. Oh my gosh. This is why I need easy, right? My coaches know this because I can't um, do technology. I can't make this, oh, there you go. I mean, it's not, okay. Having a technology brain fart here. Um, yeah, so that's what I use is I use Team Z. It does cost money, but I will tell you that it is worth every penny that you put into it. And it is a business deduction. Um, hold on, I lost my spot. So, but there are other options. So there's not just Team Z, there's Streak. There are other digital options, but I, I definitely truly believe that a digital option is what y'all should be looking for. Um, okay, so Hillary asked, okay, so Lori says you can lose stuff on the computer too. Yes, you can, and that's why you use something that's cloud-based, right? Because they have millions of dollars invested in um, keeping that up, right? Um, Hillary says my issue with tracking is that I'm stuck for the most part on my phone. So Team Z actually has a mobile app that you can use. Well, it's not an app, but it's like, it's kind of like the Coach Mobile app. Um, it is mobile friendly, so you can do your Team Z 100%. I know my coach Jess, she on? Oh yeah, there she is. Yeah, Jess uses her, Jessica Jameson uses hers a lot on your phone. Don't you, Jess? You're muted. Every day, all day. Um, I do it in pockets. Um, I do it before my kids wake up. I do it after I kid, my kids get to school. I do it between clients. I do it right now. I'll be doing it on my iPad or on my phone. I don't know which one yet. But um, yeah, no, it's, I actually prefer the mobile app more than I do the, um, on my iPad, the internet based one, um, only because it's, I guess, because I'm more accustomed to being on my phone that I guess, you know, the texting fingers, it's easy for me to copy and then paste over into the comment section. So it makes the process a lot easier. Um, I actually have the website saved on my iPhone, um, on my screen. So I literally just click on it and I go into it. So it's like, it, it is an app, but it's just saved on, um, bookmarks on my, on my um, home screen. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know when I use that, I'm, so that's really important. She said, work it in the cracks. So like, if, if you guys are thinking, oh, I can't possibly reach out to more people, right? Like, let's say you work a super busy job, you have a mad busy life with kids and, or whatever your life is like, like Jess is one of the busiest people I know. And she has four children and she's going back into getting her master's degree and she's so busy. And I think it's really important to be able to work your business in cracks like that. I do believe that the most ideal place to be able to do that is Oh, I'm burping. Sitting down with laser focus, that's like your number one ideal situation, right? But we all know that what we ideally want and what really happens in real life are not always aligned, right? <laughs> because life is like that. And so being able to have something that's like that that you can get on your mobile and it like remembers. So like, let's say you, okay, if I've ever done this to you, I'm just, just know I still love you, right? And this doesn't mean that I don't love you. So like I send out my happy birthday messages while I'm on the toilet in the morning from my phone, right? And I log them. I have like a copy and paste thing that I send to people that like says, hey, oh my gosh, happy birthday, emoji, emoji. And it's like, I hope you have an awesome day, emoji. And then it's like, do you have anything cool planned for today? Emoji, right? Copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, right? And then I can just go to my Teams on my phone and just log, 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 log. Right. So then I've like already reached out to like five people just when I've gone pee in the morning. Right. So, so it's like, that's kind of like how I wake up in the day. I know it sounds crazy, but that is what I do. And, um, so you work it in the cracks, but you can, you can just go from screen to screen, you know, because your phone keeps multiple windows open, just like a computer does. So, um, yeah, so that's one thing that is really awesome about that. Um, Oh, so Tracy, so I covered that I'm not inviting 50 people a day. I do on average invite 15. My goal is to invite 15 people a week. 
right, to paid groups, not free groups, either the coaching opportunity or um, that. Actually, my, my goal right now is actually higher than that. It's actually 25 per week because I'm trying to fill out my go for no sheet. Does anyone here not know what the go for no sheet is that's on the Misfit Republic website? Anyone? No one knows what it is? Okay, so basically, oh my God, mine's not here. It's upstairs. Um, do, it, does, do any of my coaches have their go for no sheet uh, where they can just show it in the picture? I do. Give me just a quick second. Okay. I'm going to dig so it out of my bag. Oh, here. Here, Jess, Jess has one too. Okay, so basically it's a go for no sheet. Like, can you see Jefferson's got it? And so I use that for inviting and a lot of my coaches use it too. Oh, look at she's got it all filled out halfway. What? Halfway in the month, halfway filled out, right? So um, basically going back to the numbers thing, right? You, most people close one out of 10 invites. That is like a fact. It's a proven fact that most people, that out of 10 people you invite, one person will say yes, right? And so if you want to be hitting Success Club 5, you need to be inviting how many people? At least 30 people a month. If you want to be hitting Success Club 10, at least 50. If you want more, more, right? And so you can really use those numbers. Knowing that, you can kind of reverse engineer how you're going to structure your month, right? Or your weeks. And so if you're inviting people, it, so if you're not tracking your invites, that's something that you should definitely start doing. I highly recommend doing that. That sheet you can print off on the Mr. Republic website. And maybe I'll, or I'll upload it to Vicky's team page. I'm going to write it now. Um, and so basically every single month I print those off and I put like, you know, who, you know I write their name in as I invite whether it was to a challenge group or a coaching opportunity. And then we use highlighters. Like a lot of the coaches on my team use highlighters. So like if someone says, not right now, you highlight it pink or whatever. You have a code, like a little map right on top. Not right now is our pink, right? Purchased a green for money. I always do green. I always do my beach body on my calendar. It's always green. So um, I truly believe that. You got to have the like color associations and stuff with stuff, um, you know, and whatever. So if it's, and if it's like a flat out no or didn't even respond a different color, right? I keep them in a binder that I have. So like, you know, I'll usually look back like two to three months and I'll say, okay, who did I invite to a coaching opportunity three months ago? You know, or, you know, what different things are. And then I'll be like, okay, I'm going to invite that person again, right? Because no means not right now. It does not mean no. Okay. And so, and so I continue to use those over and over and over. And then it helps me know who I'm going to invite on a monthly basis and stuff and, and keeps people fresh in mind. And while I'm still doing those, you know, 30 to 50 connects, you know, where I'm still building new relationships and deepening the relationships that I have. And it becomes a process where you're just constantly having conversations with people, right? You're just kind of in flex with people. And so, um, yeah, so I highly recommend if you're feeling like you're not like hitting your goals or like, you feel like you're inviting, like, this is always a test for my coaches is I'll say, they'll say, I just know I'm just struggling with success club. I don't know why I'm not hitting it. I, you know, I feel like I'm doing all the right steps. My number one question is always like, how many people have you invited this month? And if they go, hmm, a lot, I think a lot. I'm like, are you tracking it? No. Right. So, okay. So you got to track it. And then you say, okay, I, I have invited this many people. Right. And if you've truly invited enough people to hit those like statistical numbers, then you just, there's got to be some little thing that needs to be tweaked. Sometimes it's like even just a slight wording in your messaging, right? But you got to be honest with yourself first about who, you know, how many people you're actually really inviting, right? Because the inviting process is like truly the hardest part about this business. I think it's the thing that people have the most fear about. This book really takes the fear out of it. He talks about it in a way that like kind of makes you feel like it's your obligation, right? Cause for me, like that's, I used to be really afraid of inviting people and cause I was afraid of that. No, I was afraid of what people would think. And then it became more of, you know, I remember Vicky telling me like, well, what has coaching done for you? Like, well, coaching has changed my life in every single way for the positive. Right. And so now when I invite people, I think about that. I think about who I was before I became a Beachbody coach 
And then I think about who I am now and it's so exponentially different from the better that like I think about how I can give that gift to someone else. Like before every single invite, I think about that. Right. So I think it comes across in your messaging and your conversations and stuff. Um, hold on, I'm going to look at these things. I was told on my workout video on Instagram that it looked delicious. Oh, Lori, that you look delicious? Oh my gosh. Lori, you've been getting like crazy stuff on your country heat. I don't know what he meant, but I laughed my ass off. <laughs> and really, that's, unless you okay. put in the video with you, there's really only a thing that that could possibly mean. <laughs> Oh my god. And I think he needs glasses, seriously. I mean, this old lady does not look delicious, okay? <laughs> well, he does to you. Or, yeah. um, that's well, great. You are gorgeous. Did you not see your before and after picture that you I know. Oh, you're yeah. sweet. Okay, back to the Zoom. Let's go, <laughs> Just have to say. <laughs> no attention. Yeah. Okay, Rosa. Oh yeah, Rosa has a healthy gut group. Yeah, because she has candida. So Rosa has a healthy gut group that she started with over a hundred people. Yeah, start, yeah, if you can't find, so she says start your own groups. So if you guys can't find a group to do it, start it. Like for me, there was like tons of like IIFYM and flexible dining groups, but they are all a bunch of freaking gross ass bros that posted like pornographic pictures all the time. And I'm like, I ain't about that, right? So I, I did a women only group that is called the Macro Maidens. And I've just kind of added every value, everything that I find new information, I just add it to it, right? And so, um, and so I love to do that. Yeah, even coaches can ask for Christmas for Christmas. I agree. I always do that. Okay, Angie, I have a question. Feeling like I word vomit a lot. Okay, so Angie, have you watched the closing with class video that Andrea Crowder did in the Entrepreneur Academy? I have, but I think I need to go back and watch it again. Yeah, I've watched it like probably over 10 times. So, and I feel like I get something new out of it. So if you guys do feel like, so Angie says she's feeling like she has problems with closing. Um, so one thing I was just, what was it on? Um, so in the Entrepreneur Academy 1, which is on our website, or the Mr. Republic YouTube, there's a video that is um, Raina Odell and, oh, what's her name? The other cute, blonde, bubbly girl. Um, I can't remember. It's called Recruiting School, though, is the video. And one thing she talks about it, too, is really keeping your conversation short, right? Like, when you get to the inviting process, because I'm the same way, too. I'm, well, I'm like a, I'm an owl and, a, and an emerald, so I'm like, facts and figures. I'm like, oh, you want to know about it? Oh, I'm going to tell you every little detail about this, right? And then people are like, whoa, 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 right? So that was something that I really struggled with too was like, I just love it. I'm like, I want to tell you all about it, right? And like share you with information. And they're like, I don't want your information. And so is I, I keep myself to like one sentence at a time and mm -hmm. then ask a question, right? So I give one bit of information ask a question. And it's really cool in that recruiting school, Raina Odell talks about a dance. It's like a dance that you have with someone, right? And you wouldn't like dance someone and be like, I'm going to shove you against the wall, you know, because I'm going to dance so hard with you, right? So like, that's kind of how she explains it. And so I like, so I'm really big on, I know some of you guys will think I'm a little nuts here that don't know me. I'm really big on like, visual cues and things like that and like um like i say things to myself while i'm working right like to keep my intentions pure like because it can get really really easy to get wrapped up in the whole success club or rank advancement or things like that and i really really try to keep like people first like when i'm talking to people and i feel like when we're bombarded by social media and all this stuff that we have that we sometimes have to really remind ourselves that right and remind ourselves of that and so I do the same thing with that, with the, with the word vomit type thing is I, I say, I'll say to myself, am I dancing, right? Am I dancing with this person? And it sounds stupid, but I tell you, it freaking works, right? It works. It helps you to slow down because a lot of it is that you're really excited. You're excited for the person. 
you're excited for the potential sale or new coach or whoever it is, right? And it's like, you want it to happen, right? You see it in your mind. You see it, the future, how it's going to play out. And you always have to keep in mind that they don't see it that way, right? You know, oh my God, he talks about that in this book too. He talks about how people are, you know, we're so concerned with how they're going to approach it or, or how it's going to play out, but they're only concerned about themselves, right? They're only concerned about how it's going to help them and their life, right? And so it's really easy to get caught up in that. So just slowing down, those were the two Zooms that really helped me with closing is the closing with Cat classmate Andrea. I think she did such an amazing job. Like I really, really love that, um, that video. So if you guys haven't watched that, I highly recommend that. And then the recruiting school with Raina Odell. They actually talk a lot about recruiting too and tips on recruiting, but they also go into um, closing and, and things like that. So that would be my advice. And just really trying to slow it down. Like um, there's also a, are you in Joel's group, Angie? Yeah. Okay, in Joel's group, there's also, and I'm gonna see if it's in Vicky's team page. There's also a script that is really good that's like the Success Club 100, like how the Scout kept hitting Success Club 100 basically. And she basically, it's Leslie, I think is her name, and it, it breaks down like how she did it with the script. Now, when I say script, I don't mean don't copy her words, right, because it won't sound like you, but the way she, it's the way she asks the questions, right? You know, she asks very specific questions at very specific times and it really helps keep the conversation going but not with no overwhelm right does that make sense so I think that might help you too and I actually I work with that script by my desk because I have the same problem where I like I still four years later I still get so excited obviously y'all see me on this ding zoom right I'm like blah, 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 you know like so that's how I get the messaging too so that might help you too um thank you you're welcome i'm gonna upload that success club thing too so i'm gonna upload the gopher note and the success club thing if it's not in vicky's group already my kids have oh my gosh angie yeah see your kids have ripped up pages and scribbled over it see it happens using teensy yeah yeah so teensy is uh $29.95, I think. I paid the founder's fee because I was in the beta group. Um, you, Oh, yeah. So you can get 30 days free with Team Z. If you want to try it out, it's 30 days for free. You can import all your Facebook friends. You can see how it works. It's, it literally takes you like 10 minutes to import all of your Facebook friends. Um, it's really You can import all of your um, back office people, so all of your existing customers and things like that, all their info automatically, and there's tutorials in there, and it shows you exactly how to do it. I should do a teach training on Teensy. Oh, you know, I've had about 20 people ask me that. I think I probably will. There's a guy that will do a call. Yeah, the founder guy will do a call. Cindy. Yeah. I looked at all those tutorials that he did, and it was still so confusing. And you are so tech savvy, girl. You could so teach me a lot of shit. Oops, I'm so not but, tech savvy, but I, but I feel like no, I... No, I've tried to watch that stuff, and it's like, okay in one ear and out the other. It is so confusing. I'm more like hands-on where I can, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it was just really confusing. So I think you would be, you would rock it, girl. I really think so. Maybe I'll have Stephanie do it with me. Um, just saying. Okay, I'm writing this down. Teensy. Yeah, I have a lot of people. I've actually had people ask me to do it like in person, like groups of people. So I'm like, I can't do that. Okay, so I think I answered everyone's questions that was in there. Um, so does anyone have any questions that they didn't post in the group really quick or want more information on anything that we talked about here tonight? Because I know I'm not allowed to go over an hour and I think I already, <laughs> Vicky's like, don't go over an hour. She knows me. She knows me too well. No? No one? Bueller? Bueller? No one? Okay. Okay, well, okay, so so here, just make sure that I do this. So I'm going to post the go for no thing. I'm going to post the Success Club 100 script. Am I going to post anything else? I'll post a picture of the book that I recommended too, so you guys can see that, um, that book. But this book, like literally this book, I mean, changed my life. 
Like it changed everything. My routine that I do in the morning, everything. And how I approach my business. It, it gave me more of a, I think a lot of people, like we get into coaching and we don't think of the business side of coaching and what we're doing as network marketing, right? I think that we listen to and read a lot of personal development that is on personal growth, right? Things like that. Like, so things that are feel good or, you know, leadership or things like that. But I don't think enough people do enough personal development that is based in business, right? And, and how we're running a business or even how to understand how network marketing works, which is the business model that we're in. And for those of you guys that don't know, I mean, I have been in business, so I've, I've been an accountant for 17 years, almost 18 years in January. Um, and I primarily work with small businesses and from, you know, single mom and pop shops, like network marketing people all the way to multi-million dollar businesses and have been with them since the beginning, right? So, um, so like I've seen all these different business models over that time period and, you know, network marketing is not like any of them. And I truly believe it is the best business model that is out there. But if you don't understand how it works and how to maximize it to its fullest potential, I feel like you're kind of holding yourself back, right? And this book, like, breaks it down and breaks kind of down a really good process of how you can see your business, right? How you, how, like the number side of things, which I know a lot of people aren't numbers, especially if you're in Vicky's downline. A lot of us are more like, you know, oh, oh, let's fly around, right? Or be mermaids or, you know, so we're more artistic and, you know, so, but I think it's really, really important to, um, to actually have a grasp of how that works because then when things happen, like when it gets slow or when it gets harder, you know how to respond in your business, right? You know where you need to ramp up or where you're actually, I mean, you're in control of your business, right? At any given time, whether people aren't, um, you know, whether you feel like people aren't saying no or, or saying yes to you or not, like you're in control of how many people you, you can put yourself in front of, right? And, and everything in this business is a skill. There is no, well, okay, maybe there's like, a 0.01% of people in this business who are naturally talented in network marketing, right? But like everything in this business is a skill that can be taught, right? So if you're feeling like you're weak in a point in an area, you're not understanding like the numbers side, you got to dig in, you got to do things and, and maybe read about things that aren't necessarily what you would normally read about. And I just really like the way he puts like that side of things for this business in this book. And so, um, so there you go. What is it? Hold on. Now you guys all talked again and I'm saying, I asked you guys questions and then y'all talking this thing. Like my coaches just interrupt me on my <laughs> No, I was going to interrupt you, but I was like, okay, I don't want to be rude. No, so yeah. So there's the other book that you did the 12 week, it was a 12 week year. Oh my gosh. Yes. So that's so which one should I read first? The miracle morning. Cause like I'm about to buy one. Like, this week and I'm like I don't know which one I want to start with I would start with the miracle morning miracle morning I mean, okay. the one for network marketing like I do love the miracle morning one so he has one that's just called the miracle morning and then he has books that are like geared towards different um business you know segments right so there's like the miracle morning for salespeople, the miracle morning for network marketing the miracle morning for real estate oh, okay so um, I, I just think that the Miracle Morning for Network Marketing has so much extra like good stuff that's our business specific because for, for me, the Miracle Morning helped me establish good morning habits. It helped me establish routines that make me more successful in my business, right? Like I, I do a very specific routine every single day you know, of the week and it sets me up for just a really good day, right? And which is good, which is what we want in our business. Now, the 12-week year, which is all like both these books are like in my top five books of personal development. And for those of you guys that don't know, I am a personal development junkie, right? I mean, we're talking like literally shoot it up my arm, right? I mean, like I am obsessed. So, um, so, you know, for me to say that is a kind of a big deal. Right. And so, um, the 12 week year really helps you establish laser focus then 
on your goal, on your goals and only on like a top three, three maximum goals over a 12 week period. So I kind of feel like this book, you start you on more of like a really positive and healthy habit and routine for yourself. And then the 12 week year kind of like just really nails it in and drives it in. And like why well, that 12 week year is pretty awesome. Like I'm on my first 12 week year and I'm like hitting goals that I have not been hitting in just three weeks. So I'm like, Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So Yay, I'm excited. So I, I recommend both of them. Read both of them like right away. <laughs> so, yeah. Like the next two weeks, read one, one back to back. So yeah, that would be my, my recommendation for sure. Um, okay. So did I miss? I have a question. Oh, tax time. <laughs> we got tax questions. Okay, yeah. Who is that, Teresa? Yeah, it's Teresa. So I have a Team Z question. I have Team Z. I actually just put it on hold, and I did the um, beta group too. So thankfully, I have that. But um, and it stays even if you freeze it. Yeah. But anyways, um, I've been using Instagram mostly lately. It's been working way better for me than Facebook. I, I don't know, I'm using Instagram too, which is getting me a lot of followers. So it really makes it easy for me to have people to reach out to that are actually following me first. So it gives me that, that go to, you know, start engaging a conversation. But um, is, do they have it where you can pull your Instagram people over? Uh, okay, so I don't know if you can import your Instagram people, but you, like, I, I, they do have it like in the follow up and the touches. So you can like say where you talk to someone, there is a place to put in every like customer or, you know, like client profile. Yeah. I knew, Instagram I, handle, you know, on right, I knew that much. So I, do you, do you track pretty much every person, even if they're like, um, I asked Vicky this, like every person you reach out to, are you tracking, like in keeping track of that? Because mm -hmm. it's such a pain in the ass with Instagram because their names are like this long. <laughs> yeah, I know. And well, and that's why I use um, copy and paste. So one thing that really has helped me with, um, so y'all are probably going to laugh at me. Some of my coaches that are like all tech savvy, you're going to laugh at me. Like I didn't know you could use Instagram on the computer, right? I thought it was, see, look at Justin Jefferson's like laughing. So I thought it was only your phone, right? Say with Pinterest. Oh my God, that's open up a world for me too. Now that you can, I found out you can use Pinterest on a desktop. Oh my God, like get me off that thing. But like, so Instagram, so the one thing that's really helped me with that is so I'll have my Teamsy and my Instagram up on my thing. So I can just split back and forth. And I, I do, like I know Jessica Jameson talked about copy and pasting. And that's something that I do a lot of. So I don't, I like... I basically type my message, right? And then I copy and paste it. Yeah. Right. And so the one thing I like about the, the desktop with Instagram is that you can copy and paste it really easily. Unlike, you know, if you, if you do it on the phone, like at least with my phone, you can't do it after the fact, like you can't just like press and hold and it says copy text. Like it does on awesome Facebook, you know, so you have to copy and paste it before you post it. So you type it out, copy, copy it, post, Paste it in your team. Now, the other thing, just to kind of touch on that, on the computer version of Instagram, you can't direct message though, right? Because I haven't been able to do that at all. No, you can't. No, you can't. Oh, yeah. But, you know, like, I know Jess, like, Jess and Crystal. Is Crystal? Yeah, Crystal's still on her, but her face is frozen. They stay here. It's, like, really funny. They'll, like, go to, like, Panera, and they'll have, like, laptop, tablet, phone just for that reason they're like sitting in their powwow and, and they're like you know because you can send emojis and direct message oh i just did that okay type on this now who i just did who did i just contact right and one thing i do too is i don't actually like if i can copy and paste it i will copy and paste the message but i don't copy and paste all my messages i'll like basically write i do notes to myself so like if i and i also am not messaging everyone so I wanted to make that very clear. So I, I know like Vicky's talked a lot with you guys about the CCQ, like the comment, right. uh, comment, right. compliment or question. Right. Like that's what I do. And so basically, and that's what I consider a reach out, right? Like our touch to someone, they call it Teamsy touches. That's what they call it in Teamsy. 
Um, so like I'll do, um, I don't ever just like something. So it's either gotta be a unique comment where I do the comment, you know, compliment, question, or comment, whatever, right? Um, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, and so I'll do that, or it'll be a message. So like if I just leave a comment on someone's page, I just write in my team Z, I'll be like, RB comment, right? Relationship build comment or relationship build message, right? So let's say I, I'll like, let's say someone posts an awesome picture of something they ate on their page and I message them because I'm like, yeah, it's been a while since I've actually messaged this person. So I'll message them and be like, oh my God, that looked really good. Like, can you send the recipe to me for that? Right? That's a relationship building message. Right. Right, so I don't necessarily copy and paste everything or write all my stuff that I'm doing. But, but yeah, like I like it for Instagram too. I mean, um, you know, Instagram's just a little bit different. You just, you got to kind of work with two things. Like that's what I do is I, I do my Instagram posting for my phone because I like using emojis. And I have a emoji thing on my computer, but I don't like it. I like my emojis on my phone. <laughs> They're cool. They're cuter, right? So you just kind of got to work with it like in that realm. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, and one thing too is you can always look at your history of your Instagram. Like, I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but you can actually, there's a way to see who all, everyone that you've commented on and like a history. So like, let's say you're not at a place where you can enter in your Teamsy, right? I mean, you could do it from your phone too, if you're on your phone, but let's say, I know a lot of my coaches will do their relationship building and that kind of stuff. And then at night they'll go back and they'll kind of enter it into their Teamsy and track it. Right? You know, that's always an option, too. You can always kind of go back and look. So, I have a question about, um, I know that you've, or from what I've heard, you've really always liked Teamsy. Have you tried Google Streak? And if so, like, what, what's better about Teamsy than Streak? Um, okay, so I actually came from a software program called ACT, is what I used, which is what a client of mine had been using for a really long time. And then I switched from Act to Teamsy. Um, but Streak is, um, well, it's all run through Gmail, right? So it's um, all Gmail based. So it's linked to your email. So you have to, it's much more self directed, if that makes sense. Like the one, the one thing that I really love about Teamsy is that it forces you to speak to people that you don't talk to. Right. And that was a problem that I had with my act software was it was all me directing. And I realized that out of the, you know, I have whatever, 2,100 friends on Facebook. And then I have another 2000 people on my like page. And I look at those and like the cross breed, I only have like 400 people on my like page that I'm friends with. So like that's an, another additional, whatever, 1600 people that I need to be connecting with. Right. Well, I realized with my act software, which is kind of how, Google Streak works is I was literally talking to the same 200 people all the time, right? I, I was leaving out all these other people. And since having, having Teamsy, you know, it, it brings people up that you wouldn't normally talk to and you go to their page and then all of a sudden your stuff starts showing up in their newsfeed because you're leaving the CCQs or you're sending them a, a message or whatever. And then I've gotten new customers. I've gotten people that are like, I haven't talked, I didn't even know I was friends with. Like, I have no idea who these freaking people are. And I send them a happy birthday message because they came up with my freaking Teensy. Or no, they came up with my thing for the happy birthdays. I send them a happy birthday message. I log them in Teensy. And then two weeks later, they're buying a challenge pack for me, right? Because they see a picture of me. Like, that happened to me after my country heat pictures when I posted those. And I was like, what? Like, that was like the easiest sale ever. And that would have never happened if I wouldn't do, wasn't doing that, right? And so, um, and I know Crystal's had that, right? Crystal, you've had that happen too with Teamsy, where you just weren't talking to people. Um, so Google Streak, like you can go. So if you're not on the Platinum Presenters website, like all of you guys have access to it because you are on Platinum Presenters. Um, they have Platinum Presenters University, which is an amazing, amazing resource for all of you. It's Christine Dwyer's um, resource. So you have to get approved to use it. So all you have to do is sign up for it. It takes a couple of days. You put in your email and your coach ID. They just verify that you're in Christine Jack Dwyer's downline. But if you're in Vicky's downline, you're, you're all in it. She has an amazing video, probably the best one I've seen on Google Street, which is what she talked about at Platinum Edge because that's what she's using. For me, 
like I said, it's too um, business. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, you know, which is really weird because I'm like an Excel freak. So I thought I would really like it, but I don't like it. I like just the layout of TMZ for me. Like it keeps me motivated. So I think that you should try both of them and see what they work. Plus side of Google, it's free, right? It's totally free. Right? Totally. totally free, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's free. It's free. Okay, yeah. And I need the website to that platinum thing because I knew I was on the downline, but um, yeah, I didn't know there was a website. So. You know, Vicky is going to kill me. Okay, well, I'll stop asking questions. No, it's okay. I got on late. I had a work event. I'm, I'm like, sorry. I'm like, ooh, guess what I did? I went over an hour. Boom. You can blame like, it on me. <laughs> no, she knows. She knows better. She knows it's all me. I don't know. So, um, yeah, but it's important. I want you guys to get your questions answered, you know. So, um, but yeah, I do think that either way you go. Crystal, are you still using Streak? Yeah, I'm still using Streak, but the number one drawback to using Streak is that there's no mobile on it. So I can only use it on my computer through Google Chrome because it's an add-on for Chrome. Oh, okay. So you can't work in the pockets like Jessica was saying. There's no way to do that with Streak. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's crazy. I mean, come on, Google. Really? You're Google. Like, get it together. Andy? Yes. <laughs> You're like, where did that voice come from? <laughs> What's Instagress? I've heard of it, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. Can you let me know? I love it. Yeah, I don't know. I was going to, that was actually something I was going to ask Teresa, like, because I love Instagram. Yeah. Like, I've never even heard of that before. So, um, it's a software, basically. You, they have a three-day trial only, but it will go in, and you can, like, set it up however you want, but it'll go in and follow people for you. Um, you can set it up to comment people, but I don't do that because I hate it when people comment on my post, and you can totally tell it's not legit. <laughs> nice yeah. pick. And it's like, or, like, what did you get? Lori, you got one the other day that was, like, Oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody said it did sound like Instagram. It was, uh, looks delicious. Oh, yeah. There you go. I wonder if that was one of those, if that's what that was. That's yeah, probably, probably what... It could have been, because I get stuff all the time that, yeah. like, doesn't even match what I'm posting. But it'll, like, you know, like the pictures. And then if they're not following you back, it'll go and unfollow people after so many days. So then that way you're not getting, like, thousands of followers but I've been doing it for here let me look real quick that's I, I do that but like on my own <laughs> like I just I'm like right but like that. it works for me because I work a lot of hours yeah. and I have a I run an emergency dental office and it I can't be on working my business I I guess I'm really more honest than I want to be. I want to like cheat and get on and do my own thing, but he pays me a good salary and I feel bad. But um, I've been doing it for probably about three weeks solid in Segress, and I have 2,648 followers, and I started out with about 290. Oh, that's crazy. And then it, I'm following 1950, but that like goes up and down. So it's been awesome because so you go in your activity and you see who's following you, but you're not following them back. And then you can look at their page and see, you know, some of them are like no one I would ever want to talk to or from other countries. You get a lot of that too. Like I get a lot of creeper Indian guys reaching out to me, but, um, but if it's someone that I feel like I can connect with and that I would get along with, then I'll send them a direct message. And it's really been huge for me. It's helped me tremendously because I don't have, like you were saying, they go to sit in Panera. I could never do that. Finding even 20 minutes in a day or 30 minutes in a day is like heaven to me to be able to even just, and then I come home and I just bust it out late at night, you know. But um, how do you look at the history on Instagram, though? I was just looking, trying to figure that out. I think you go into your settings. Yeah, I can't remember. 
Yeah, I don't have that. What phone do you have, Teresa? An iPhone. And you can get Instagress on the iPhone? So Instagress is through the computer. And like I said, you, do, you can do like a three-day trial. Um, and then after that, like I paid for 90 days. It was $24 for 90 days. And I just thought, it, to me, that's kind of chump change, whatever, no big deal. I could spend that easy on something that doesn't even matter. And so it's really made my, um, you know, like being able to reach out to more people way better. You know, I just realized I have a um, third-party app. For history? Yeah, well, you can go and you can see all the people you've liked in the settings. Uh-huh. Are you able to see that? Um, yeah. No, you know, I can probably just, oh, wait, posts you've liked, yes. Okay, so you can do that. And then you can also do, like, okay, so if you go to your heart button on the bottom, do you have that? I would have a droid, so I don't yeah. know if it looks the same. Yeah. You go in your heart button, and then you see you or, fo or following. Oh, see, I have mine set up as a business page, too. So it's following activity and people. Oh, okay. Mine's not, mine's set up as personal, so. So I, I, you I love it. As I can see everything. I can see like who's liked my stuff. I can see who's followed me, all the comments, you know, all that stuff. And then you can see the following people, um, the people I'm following. Like when you leave a comment on their thing, it'll say you you left a comment. Okay. So it'll be like it'll tell me okay, like Chrissy Boo, Chrissy Boo, whatever someone I'm. <laughs> <laughs> so it shows me the two pictures that Chris Abu felt like or healthy habits for Lisa like all these different posts you know or you know so you can see what your people what your followers are liking on other pages okay your idea for who they are you know right uh, and then if you land know by default someone some people know who he is um, that, that's probably one of the downfalls with Instagram is it you almost can't keep up with it yeah, but i have it set up at a high setting too yeah uh, so i could kick that down so it's not doing so much yeah, well, that's freaking crazy the one thing i hope doesn't happen to you is happen to carla maddox rivera her new name's rivera rivera right is she it wasn't with beachbody but she used to have a cloth vapor business and she used a program that was similar to that with her cloth apron business and so she ended up building like a giant Instagram account that like had like 25,000 people on it. And then Instagram will go in and they'll like, sometimes they'll like clear it all out. They'll like level the playing field. So like if people's accounts haven't really like for the bots and things like that, yeah, they'll like clear it out. So she went from like 25,000 followers down to like, it was like 2000 or something. It was crazy. Like overnight, you know? So and she had a lot of that too. She had a lot of Pakistani people. It was like we were like for some reason a lot of her followers were from Pakistan. But yeah, I, I get that too, and they're like weird. <laughs> I just ignore that or block. You know. I know it's so strange though that you can't put on. I mean, you know, like how you can with like Facebook marketing and like advertising, how you can like say okay, people in the United States, like it's weird that you can't do that with. I mean, you would think that they would have something like that where you could say okay, only people in the United States and Canada, you know, whatever to. Right. to be part as part of that but I guess you know it's hard Josh Coates is who suggested it oh really at first it was Crowdfire was his big thing but then Crowdfire made all those rules where you couldn't yeah I use, I used to use Crowdfire too yeah and so then he discovered Instagram and that's what he uses so basically so Crowdfire was like a third-party app that I was using uh, and it was working pretty well like I was I was building pretty fast although Instagram, I love Instagram because I feel like you like, I feel like people like me. I feel like you'll really like no. me. You know what I mean? It's like you get, I mean, you know, Facebook, it's like you can't tell people really that you're stalking them, but it's acceptable on fate on Instagram to be like, I'm totally stalked your page. I just looked at pictures from like five years ago, like on your Instagram, right? You know, and they're like, Oh my God, I just stalked you. It's like, I just stalked you too. Isn't this cool? We're both stalkers. 
you know, so I feel like Instagram is so like, I mean, it's kind of like Snapchat too, but like Instagram is better than Snapchat by far, I think. But it's like, because people like they know what you're about, right? They know that they're coming to see you for these things. And it's like, they either like you or they don't, you know, <laughs> it's like, that's just how it is. So I feel like the in Instagram is very well qualified leads for Beachbody, right? Because it's people and people even, I even follow and have gotten customers off of Instagram. Like I know a lot of people are afraid of Instagram because they feel like it's oversaturated or they feel like they see all the people that they like, but they're like, I want to be friends with you or I want that person on my team are the people that have like no shakes, no coaches, no wraps, all this stuff on their thing. Oh, I fucking follow those people like a motherfucker, right? Like I am on that, right? <laughs> because I'm not who they're talking about, right? They're talking about the a-hole people that come on there that are like, hey, nice workout program. You want to come join my free fitness group? You know, like they don't take the time to build a relationship with them, right? So I've actually gotten customers that have had that thing on there because like I still follow them. I still, you know, interact with them and add value and I'm friends with them, right? I'm legit friends with them, not just looking at them as like a number, you know? And so don't be afraid to like people like that. Like if you, and that, cause that's what I love about Instagram is it's really, it's so easy to really target your avatar and like exactly who you want to work with. And then people are either going to, they are, they're going to either follow you back because they like you or they're not. Right. So it kind of makes it so much simpler than Facebook, right? Where people are kind of like, well, sure we can be friends, but I'm secretly going to unfollow you because I don't like looking your shit and you'll never know. You know, it's like one of those things that it's just like that. I mean, that's Instagram is my favorite social media. Cindy. platform. Yeah. Is it normal to have your followers like fluctuate? I'm still, it's me again. The little girl voice in your head. <laughs> No, it's you know. So there's lots of you, know. you had that confused. Oh, you had that confused look on your head. Like, who is that again? <laughs> oh, so oh, no. So anyway, I'm I'm starting to post on Instagram more, and I'm having a blast with that. I totally love it. But is it normal for the followers to like, you know, you have them and then you lose like two or three oh, yeah. the next day? Is that normal, or am I doing something wrong? No. The key to Instagram to keeping your your followers, your if you don't post, like if I don't post on Instagram for a day, I will lose like fifteen or twenty followers. Right. So people will like and unlike, and I mean, you got to think of how many people are on Instagram every single day. And Instagram, I feel like, is way more fickle for consistency, right? Like if you're going to be using Instagram as a platform, you need to be posting on there like three to five times a day and you need to be hashtagging the crap out of it, right? So you can do 30 hashtags per post. Don't put it in the body of the post, put it in the comments. Like that's one thing. Don't ever do that. Really? Well, okay. Hold on back up. Why? You Just because same, it distracts people from the message. You can use the same hashtags, right? I copy and paste the same ones. Yeah, I, do too. I have on my. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know about putting it in the comments. Though. Yeah, that's so good. You know, I only put a maximum. Oh yeah, three he did and a So like in the original. He did training on the Instagram, and she said that's a really good one. What what what? Sorry, Cindy. Well, I think he did a training on the Instagram, and she said put it in the comment section. And so I'm sorry, I ran you over. Oh, okay. I could I couldn't hear you. Were cutting out a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, you always put them. So I, I put a maximum of three hashtags in my message. Sometimes I'll put it in there like a little bit, like, um, but I only do a maximum of three. And then, um, I basically have, um, three different, three different going hashtags. So I have one for like motivation one for fitness and one for nutrition. Right. So, and basically I copy and paste those into the comments. So, and I'll change them up and I leave a couple off. So you can only do a maximum of 30 per post. So I do about 23 or 24 in my ongoing one, and then I'll add one that's more specific to that post exactly. So like right now I'm adding quarter force in all mine because I'm doing quarter force, right? And so, um, you know, when I was doing country heat, I would add in country heat, you know, so people get that. I know Vicky doesn't do that. Vicky doesn't um, post the program that she's doing, I think. I think she says she doesn't do that, but I think I've seen her do it. But, um, but I do that because people go there who are looking at the program, right? So it's not because, you know, I think she doesn't do that because she thinks it's all coaches, right? And yeah, there are a lot of coaches, but I know for me, like when I want to do something, 
I'm an owl. I research the crap out of it. I'm going to look up the hashtag, every hashtag I possibly can of whatever it is, right? And what's the easiest way to do that? By looking it up by its name. So, um, so I definitely add in whatever program I'm doing or each body performance or whatever it is so people can find you with that. And then, and then make sure you're doing other, I know Vicki's really good at teaching that about doing other hashtags to you that are not related to your post, right? So like, I know like she does a lot of like uh, thyroid ones and Hajimoto's and stuff like that. Like for me, I do things that are like binge eating and food addiction and other things. And you know, I have rheumatoid arthritis, so I do like rheumatoid arthritis and stuff like that. You know, so whatever is specific to you that you could connect with someone. But, oh my gosh, you guys, she's going to kill me. The recording is still going. She's literally going to kill me. Okay, well, it's, it's, on the, it's on the dot, so we can end it now. Yeah. Oh, it is? What is it? <laughs> I don't look all, like, Jessie's on here. She's my only coach that's on here. She's like, I'll sit on here for days. Well, I, me too, and I'm so happy because I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to catch the last few minutes, and I'm like, yay, I got more time. <laughs> I know. So here, I'm going to end the recording. Sorry, Vicki, if you watched it. <laughs>